Hi everybody, my name is Jeff Smith and I'm a professor in the Industrial and Systems Engineering Department uh, here at Auburn. And the topic of this video is answering the question of what is simulation? And the context for our question today is the set of courses that we teach, uh, the simulation related courses that we teach in our department. We currently have five courses on the books. We have one required course in our undergraduate curriculum and four courses that are special topics courses, advanced courses, graduate courses, and so on that can be taken uh, as electives. So simply, simulation involves creating and using computer models that mimic the behavior of complex systems. So rather than using the system itself to perform analysis and to do assessment, we're going to use the simulation model, the computer model that we created of that corresponding system. So let's have a couple look at a couple examples here. So here's our first example model. Hopefully everyone is going to recognize this. Uh, this is a model of a food truck. And I'm sure everybody knows how a food truck works. But you can see our computer model, we have the arriving customers. Uh, they go and uh, wait in line if necessary to be served by the, uh, the food truck, their food's made, uh, and then they depart. And so you can see that for this simple model, we have a nice 3D animation, a really simplified uh, version of the, uh, of the uh, system. So the second example is a more abstract version of that exact same model. So this is what's called a tandem queuing system where we have two servers. In this case, you can think of the food truck where the customer arrives and, and places their order. And if they have to wait in line, they, they do so. And then the order moves and is uh, made. So you either uh, assemble the order or cook the order or whatever, depending on the food truck. And you can see here that we have a computer model or simulation model of, of this tandem queuing system. And in this case, we are uh, keeping track of information as the system evolves over simulated time. So we're trying to make uh, or do some analysis on how this system behaves. In this case, we're keeping track of just two statistics. We're keeping track of the current number of entities in the system. So if you look at any point in time here, this yellow goldish line tracks how many customers are currently in the system. And we're also keeping track of the long-term average number of uh, customers in the system. So that's our second model. Our third model is a more complex model because we generally are interested in using simulation to solve complex problems that can't be solved any other way. And so what you see here is an animated version of an airport simulation where we have passengers arriving, they're going through the ticketing check-in process, they then go through the uh, security process and then on to their gate for uh, boarding and departure. And so you can see that this system is quite a bit more complex than our than our food our simple food truck example. And so what we'd like to be able to do is use the simulation model to, in some sense, optimize the behavior of the system. So maybe I want to minimize the waiting time for passengers, or I want to minimize the queue length, or I'd like to uh, optimize my staffing decisions. In other words, how many people do I have working check-in versus how many people do I have working the uh, security uh, or whatever. And so I'm going to use my simulation model to help me make uh, those decisions. So if we think about these complex systems that we just saw, we generally have, you know, we're interested in studying these systems and understanding their behavior. We have two basic ways to do that. I can either experiment with the actual system or, or I can experiment with some sort of model for the system. And so in experimenting with the actual system is sometimes done, but many times is impractical. If you think about trying to implement an optimized staffing for our airport, for example, that would be a, a very difficult uh, uh, process using the actual system. So we want to create a model of the system. And so there are two basic categories of models. We have mathematical models and we have physical models. And so physical models are often used for, if you think about wind tunnels for airplane and, and defense manufacturing, uh, architecture where you have physical models of buildings and so on. In the mathematical model case, there are two basic categories. There's the analytical solution and then there's simulation. So analytical solution in our department, we have uh, several courses that also relate to analytical modeling. Uh, but the focus here is on simulation modeling, where again, we're creating these models that mimic the behavior of the system. So the process that we have for doing simulation involves these, these four basic steps. We have conceptual design step, uh, where we're conceptualizing how we'd like the model to operate. We have what's called input analysis, where I'm looking at the actual system and I'm doing things like, if you think about our food truck, I'm trying to characterize the arrival process of, of customers, or trying to characterize the cooking process or the meal preparation process so that I can build a corresponding computer model. 
We have the actual model development, which you think about as using computer software to create the model. Verification and validation uh, involve uh, assessing the correctness of the model. And then finally, we have output analysis and experimentation, where I'm actually using the model to perform analysis steps and then making decisions, again, about optimization or system improvement and things like that. So that's it. That's our basic short introduction, uh, answering the question of what is simulation. And in our simulation courses, we cover all of these basic processes. We cover all of the topics in varying levels of detail, uh, along with several other uh, topics related to simulation.